Hey guys, so um, this is different. I was planning to do a sit down video for this and I was kind of just having trouble sitting down and getting it all out and so I figured let's try to make this a little bit less formal and see if that helps. So I'm not really sure how this is gonna go but we're gonna give it a try. Today's video is one that I have been simultaneously so, so excited to film and also intimidated to film. And the reason I've been intimidated is that this topic and this story from the Bible that I wanna share from is one that means so, so much to me. For the past three to four years, I've been doing a, a Bible in a year reading plan and so I'll start in Genesis at the beginning of the year and then work my way through. And I feel like every year, one of my favorite places to read through is this story, this part of Genesis, this story of Abraham. And every time I do, I feel like God is just showing me new things about this story, speaking to me through it. And it really just means a lot to me. And so I think that's where the intimidation comes from is just wanting to make sure that I do justice to this story and this topic. But the reality is, is that I know that I won't. I know that there's no way to sort of capture all of it in one simple YouTube video. And so instead, as I have been preparing for and praying over this video, my prayer has has been one that what I do share would encourage you and two that it would drive you to dig deeper into this story because there's really just so much there. If you're not familiar with the story of Abraham, one, you're in for a treat and two, let me just give a little bit of context so we're all on the same page. But basically Abraham is a man in the Bible at the very beginning of the Bible in Genesis who God makes this covenant with and God makes this promise that he would make him into this mighty nation and that through Abraham's family, all the families on earth would be blessed and it's actually through Abraham's family that eventually comes the line of Jesus and through whom we all receive the ultimate gift of salvation. And so Abraham's story is one that is very central to the story of the Bible and just the story of what God is doing and continuing to do throughout history. But it all starts with this promise that God makes to Abraham that he would make him into a mighty nation and that he would be the father of nations. And so that's all great and well and it sounds good until you realize that Abraham is 75 and he has no kids. Him and his wife have not been able to have children. She is barren and so that is the sort of context that this promise is made in. But from the time that promise is made to when it is fulfilled, to when they receive that child of the promise, Isaac, there's actually a period of 25 years that go by. And so that is the part of the story that I really want to focus on because I think that in different ways we've all been there. I think that we've all been in that place of waiting to receive the fulfillment of things that God has spoken over our lives, to see um, visions that he's planted in our heart to come to fruition. And ultimately the promise we are all waiting on is Jesus and the fulfillment of the work that God brought him here to do. And so I just want to share some of the things that stood out to me most from Abraham story this last time reading through it in January. If you follow along on Instagram, you probably saw some of the snippets I was sharing on my Instagram stories. I like to share things that I am learning in my Bible reading time. I don't do this every day, but just when there's something that really stands out to me or something that I just really want to share. And so as I was reading through Abraham's story, I was sharing a lot of things on my Instagram stories. And so you might recognize some of the things if you were following on there, but I'm also going to take each of those things and dig deeper into that. Also, if you haven't yet, please be sure to subscribe to my channel. I do all sorts of faith and lifestyle videos and um, yeah, I'd love to have you here if you're not subscribed already. So I have got my Bible here, some notes on my phone that I'll be pulling up, my journal, my water. This is basically what I always have when I'm filming, but now you can see it. I don't know why me just holding the camera instead of sitting down and looking at one is making this easier for whatever reason right now, but it is, so we're just gonna roll with it. So. Anywho, the first thing I want to share from Abraham's story is that God uses the waiting period to change us into people whose names match the promise. So the promise is actually first made in Genesis 12 and God says to Abraham, I'll actually just flip you around so you can see it. God says to Abraham, go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you and I will make of you a great nation and I will bless you and make your name great so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and him who dishonors you I will curse and in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed and I just want to point out something really cool here too that I wrote a note here on is the way that Abraham initially responded to this promise it says so he built there an altar to the Lord who had appeared to him and really this promise would seem impossible right because his wife has been barren they haven't been able to have kids he's 75 years old and it says that it seems impossible yet Abraham took God for his word he received what was spoken to him in faith there's actually another verse in Romans I believe that says oh, fuzzy flying around that says that Abraham's body was as good as dead yet he still believed God he believed that what God had spoken was going to come to pass where is that fuzzy still going 
So really this promise that God's making, it would have seemed so impossible, but Abraham, when God makes the promise, his posture is to record it, to remember it by building that altar, to receive it, and then to keep journeying forward. So the promise is made first in Genesis 12, but the promise is actually not made to Abraham and Sarah. The promise is made to Abraham and Sarai because those were their names previously before God changed their names. But then we get into Genesis 17 and God actually changes their names. So let me read to you what it says and again I'll just show you it says that when Abram was 99 years old that God comes to him and I'm gonna read this first verse here in a second in another point but I want to get to this part down here where God changes his name it says in verse 5 no longer shall your name be called Abram but your name shall be called Abraham for I have made you the father of a multitude of nations I will make you exceedingly fruitful and I will make you into nations and kings shall come from you. And so it says, I have made you a father of a multitude of nations. Remember at this time, Abraham still has not had his son Isaac. And so the really cool thing though that I want to point out is actually right here. You can see this note in my Bible. Abraham, before his name was changed, that name means exalted father. And then Sarai, before her name was changed, that means my princess. But when God changes their names, the meaning of the names actually changes a little bit too. And so the new names, Abraham, means the father of a multitude. And then Sarai, her new name Sarah, means mother of nations. And I just think one that's not a coincidence and two that is so cool because God makes to them this promise but before he fulfills the promise he changes them into people whose names match the promise their waiting period was not wasted time but rather it was a period of preparation that God changed them into people who are ready to receive this promise and to live out the call that God had given them and it's the same thing for us God uses our waiting periods to transform us into people who are gonna match that call that he's given us are gonna match that promise that he has made over our lives I think that there are so many ways that God works in the waiting. I did do a video on this if you want to check it out. One big way that God works in the waiting, but really God works in so many different ways in the waiting period. And in that time, he is transforming us into people who match the calling that he has put on his life, the promise that he has made to us. The second thing I want to share is also from this chapter, chapter 17. And it is that by faith, God is the one to do it. We don't earn the promise, yet our obedience is still necessary. So let me read you this part from Genesis 17. This is that first part I skipped over before, but it says that when Abraham was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to him and said to him, I am God Almighty, walk before me and be blameless, that I may make my covenant between me and you and may multiply you greatly. And so there's a couple things I wanna point out here you can just see from my notes. One, there's a statement of who God is, that he is almighty, he has complete power. And then second, there's this command to walk before me. And I think that before I looked up the definition of that and it says that in front of I think that it implies this openness that there's no hiding and it's also being in step with and close with God so there's this command to walk before me that God is commanding to Abraham and then two or three I guess there's this command to be blameless, to be innocent in wrongdoing. And then there's a that I statement that I bracketed off over here. God is commanding this to Abraham saying, that I may one, make my covenant with you and two, multiply you greatly. And the thing to note here is that the promise has already been made. If you remember, God makes the promise to Abraham in Genesis 12. And so the promise has already been made, yet Abraham still has a role to play. God is still asking obedience of Abraham. He is still asking him these things to walk before him and to walk in blamelessness and so God is faithful to the promise he is the one that does it we don't earn it yet we still have a role to play our obedience in the things that God is asking us to do and the steps of faith he's calling us to take and in walking with him and in walking blamelessly before him our obedience is still necessary and now for the final point the good one I mean they're all good but this final point is one that God has really just been working on in my own heart and so I'm really excited to share it and the point is this it is that time passing does not nullify the promise of God. It is still just as good, as true, and as beautiful as it was when he spoke it. And so to tell you what I'm talking about with this point, let me read to you from Genesis 15. This is after that promise has been made, but Abraham is still waiting. He still has not received a child. Time has gone on. And so he comes to God and he says this. Let me read it to you. 
So Abraham is coming to God and he's saying, Oh Lord, what will you give me? For I continue childless. You still have not fulfilled this desire. You still have not given me a child. And the heir of my house is Eliezer of Damascus. And Abraham said, Behold, you've given me no offspring and a member of my household shall be my heir. And so Abraham's basically saying like, Look, God, you said that you were going to give me this son, but you still have it. And you said that you want to make out of me this great nation. And it doesn't look like you're doing that. And so we've, we've got to make this happen. And so here, just take this person who's from my household and make him my heir do what you want to do through him because you still haven't given me this son and God comes back at him and I love what God says he says this he says this man shall not be your heir your very own son shall be your heir and then it says that God brought him outside he says look toward heaven and number the stars if you are able to number them then he said to him so shall your offspring be and here's that famous verse it says and Abraham believed the Lord and he counted it to him as righteousness I think that when God makes his promise to Abraham or when he speaks something over our lives he wants to do in our lives. When we receive that, we are filled with excitement. We are just anticipating receiving the fulfillment of that. But then the more that time passes, the more we wait, I think the harder it is to hope and to believe that he is still going to do that. And the temptation here we begin to face is that we are tempted to want to settle for less than what God has spoken simply because it's all that we can see. And we start to think, well, you know, this isn't exactly what God said, but maybe we can make this thing over here work and it won't really be what he said, but it can maybe sort of serve the same purpose of what it is that God spoke. We can come up with this plan B or this safety net because we're not convinced that God is actually going to do what he said he was going to do. And so we're sort of planning out how we can help God fulfill what it was he said he was going to do. And that is exactly what Abraham is doing here, or Abraham is still at this point, what Abraham here is doing with Eliezer because he's saying like, God, you've promised me this son. You said that you were going to make me into this mighty nation, but I'm still childless. Like it doesn't look like you're actually doing what I thought you said you were going to do. And so why don't we just take this guy from my household and he can be the heir, the one through whom you do all of these things. And God's response to him is no, you are really going to have your very own son. And it is through that son, through your son, he is going to be the heir through who this promise comes. And so something God has really been working on in me is to sort of let go of this Eliezer, to let go of this sort of disbelief that he isn't actually going to do what he said he was going to do, what he's spoken over that he's going to do and sort of coming up with his backup plan or this way that I'm going to help him fulfill his word or coming up with this thing that isn't exactly what he said he was going to do, but it'll be good enough and serve that purpose. But calling me to let go of that and to put myself completely at the mercy of the one who said he was going to do it and to believe that he is going to do it. And the crazy thing is that he will. Joshua 21 45 says that not one of the good promises the Lord God made failed. They all came to pass, every single one. We serve a God who is faithful to his promises and he is faithful faithful even when we are faithless. And so that is something that I have been thinking through a lot lately is just releasing that distrust, releasing this idea of how I need to make things happen if God doesn't for me and completely trusting that God is going to provide and that God is going to fulfill the things that he has spoken. And so I want to sort of close this off by reading a quote by Oswald Chambers here on my phone. Let me pull it up. The quote says, when God gives you a vision and darkness follows, wait. God will bring the vision he has given you to reality in your life if you will wait on his timing. Never try to help God fulfill his word. So those are the few things I wanted to share on waiting on God's promises from the story of Abraham, just things that I've been thinking through again in this last time of reading through this story. I really hope that these were encouraging to you. I know that this video was kind of different than how I normally do it and hopefully it was still easy to follow. Let me know if you liked kind of this more casual style of talking through a topic or if you do prefer the sit down videos, but it was something the new we tried out this time that just kind of worked for this time. So if you did enjoy this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. Also leave a comment down below letting me know your thoughts. As always, thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.